Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rog Spartha X. This is an intriguing gaming mouse from Azus with a number of interesting highlights to it, which, as you can see, include 12 programmable buttons, its own charging dock, which is brilliant for a number of different reasons, a large frame that includes not only a thumb rest, but finger rests as well, USB-C connection, and a number of other highlights. There are some striking design features to this that include a heavyweight design, so it weighs in at 169 grams, which is incredibly heavy, and almost three times the weight of lightweight gaming mice that I've tried out recently, which in itself is insane. I and mean, one of the first things that struck me when I first got it out of the box, the other thing you'll notice is a cluster of thumb buttons on the side that are designed to look like the classic ROG logo. So there are a number of interesting design highlights, both in terms of aesthetics and user capabilities in terms of what you can do with it, because it has 12 programmable buttons, so you can set them up in a number of different ways. But there are some highlights and lowlights to that design that I'm going to go through now. Now, inside the box, you get two USB-C cables, the idea being that you can connect one of them to the charging dock that you'll see here, and the other to the mouse if you need to. And one of the things that I've found is that I don't need to do that, because this charging dock enables you to not only have a wireless signal 2.4 gigahertz very close range to your mouse if you keep it on your desk but also just real convenience because when you're not using the mouse you can just drop it onto that dock it also has as i'll show you in a second a magnetic effect to it so when you put the mouse nearby it automatically sucks that charging dock sits there and gets some charge on the bottom of the dock there's also an led indicator to let you know how much charge the mouse has so I basically found that I never had to plug this mouse in because I just docked it when I wasn't using it or when it looked like it was getting low and it just kept going. And this is so convenient and easy to use because there's no little runs or anything that you need to drop it into or push it onto. It just sort of sucks onto there because of the magnet. You can see there's two charging pins, but it's remarkably easy to get it into place. This is almost certainly one of the highlights. Now, one of the other things you will have noticed immediately is that there has a metal frame on the bottom. So it's quite strikingly intriguing in that design and that's part of the reason why it's so heavy it's also worth noting that the charging dock or the wired capabilities give you a fast charge capability so this mouse gets up to 67 hours of battery life with the lighting turned off but you can also get 12 hours extra charge within just 15 minutes of docking or plugging it in so it really has a number of really interesting highlights to it there but the most striking thing obviously is that overall design aesthetic this is very much a large mouse it's wonderful for large gamers and if you are a palm gripper like me then you'll probably find that this is a good fit and it is intriguing for a number of different reasons you have a multitude of buttons on that left hand side you will notice that there are two next to the left button, but you also have this cluster of six buttons where your thumb sits. This is designed to be easy access and to allow you to be able to press those buttons with ease. But the thing that I found is that actually is quite difficult to understand where they are and be able to fill them with ease. I could fill the top two quite easily and the bottom front one, but the rest of them is quite difficult to discern between them because they're too closely clustered together. One of the other interesting things about it is those two little buttons next to the left button at the front of the mouse are actually what you would usually see as the standard sort of front and back buttons on the side of a mouse. They are backwards and forwards as default, so that's quite strange. On the right hand side, you also have a rest for your other fingers. Now you can use this in two different ways as I'll show you in a second. You can either rest your ring finger on there with your pinky sitting on that little rubberized section on the right hand side or you could put your hand so that your middle finger sits on the mouse wheel your ring finger sits on the right button and then your pinky rests on the little rest on there so there's actually options and how you put that in and i found this quite a strange thing to get used to but it shows the possibilities of what you can do with it and how you can set your hand i actually found this mouse to be too large which i never thought i'd say but this is just me perhaps trying to get used to it after coming from other smaller mice. Obviously changing mice on a regular basis it makes, it makes it quite difficult to get used to the setup of a mouse and what it's like to use. So it's a personal preference thing but also something I feel like anybody's going to need to get used to. 
not only the weight of the thing because it is massive and heavy but also just the size and shape of it and the sort of format of how you're going to hold it you can see me here holding it with my pinky on that far right rubber grip that i was talking about but you do have the option to move your hand around into different positions so although it's more of a palm grip setup you could choose how you're going to have it one of the other things that i thought was interesting is there aren't massive ptfe areas on the underside it has quite small little bits there but it does still get about the desk reasonably easy and just to show you the sheer size of the thing measurement of my hand and see just over seven inches in length and then i'll show you just the sort of size and shape of the mouse itself i'm going to do a comparison video with the corsair m65 ultra which is a similar sort of setup in terms of metal but quite a bit different in terms of size and weight so check out the description for a link to that if you're interested but you can see just to see it setup of this thing the size and shape of it the just the massive nature of it so if you've always found other mice to be too titchy then this one is a very good option because it is absolutely enormous and obviously the bonus of that is that you find that your fingers and thumbs aren't on the mouse pad and getting in the way which is almost certainly a bonus and a very nice thing so just a quick look at the difference between the m65 ultra wireless and the spartha x you can see just the sheer size the Spartha by comparison is huge. Now, I thought the M65 was a bit too small, so there's that, but also it was a very nice mouse to use, and that sort of metal frame and the overall aesthetic of it was very nice. Now, the comparison side by side is just dwarfed by the Spartha, and obviously, you have access to a lot more buttons with this one. However, as I said, it is awkward to use in that button setup unfortunately now you can see the logitech g pro x super light just for a comparison there you can see that's 61 grams so as i said you're nearly getting three times the weight with the spartha x now those side buttons are just a bit too awkward unfortunately i think they should have focused more on making them more accessible it's interesting that they're all a different size and shape because that means that theoretically they're easier to press but it's really hard to differentiate between them i found you can turn the mouse on and off on the underside and there's a pairing button too. You'll also note there's a DPI switching button on the top and you can press and hold that button and use the mouse wheel to adjust the DPI level. Now another thing of note is the side buttons as standard have a really weird setup in terms of the default settings on them. Those thumb buttons for example, one of them mutes audio, another one turns your audio down, and another one opens the Windows Start menu, so it's essentially the Windows key. Uh, I started using this just for gaming before I'd even realised what those buttons were programmed for, and before I launched Armoury Crate, and I found that my game kept minimising, and I didn't know why it was happening, and I thought there was something wrong with the mouse. I had to go into the settings to change that, and I'll show you more on that in the Armoury Crate software later on. But there was a freaky occurrence and one that made me wonder what the hell they were thinking with that default setup. Why would you want the Windows button on a gaming mouse? For productivity reasons, that might be fine, but otherwise it's not. Now, one of the other highlights of the Spartha Rex is a thing that I've seen on the Gladius 3 and the Chakram Core, which is the, the inclusion of extra switches and the ability to switch out the switches yourself. This is obviously fantastic because it means the longevity of the mouse is there. You have the option to change the switches and basically to keep this mouse going for a long time, which is a good thing because this is not a cheap mouse. It's an expensive mouse. It will set you back quite a bit of money. So to find in a year's time, for example, that the switches are suddenly double clicking and not working properly anymore would be really annoying. But now you have the option to change them out quite easily. You can see you just remove the rubber bungs on the underside and then use the included tool to take out the screws they all just pop out and then you can just pop the top off and you have access to not only the switches but also the battery you'll notice they also include two extra switches in the box these are rog micro switches they have a three pin setup and they are guaranteed up to 70 million clicks which isn't bad and they're certainly a nice mouse switch to use in general which is a pretty accurate and responsive and tactile feedback they're pretty decent and i haven't had a problem with them but obviously over time they might wear out so the fact that you can then change them really easily is great there's no soldering involved so you don't need a soldering iron 
And as you'll see, when you take the top off, you can also access the battery. So if that starts to run low, you might be able to swap that out too. Obviously, there's not an extra one included in the package, but the fact that you can access it is pretty neat. Now, I also purchased separately some other switches. These are Arno Blue Dots, and they are intriguing and cheap. So you've got a pack of six for five pounds, which is really cheap, so easy to get. And you, I can get them off Amazon. So there are other switch options that you can obviously purchase. You can get some extra Omron switches, for example. And you can see that you can just pop these out. Now, with something like the Chakram Core and Azus, you have the option of three and five pin. Here, it's just three pin. But you'll see just how remarkably easy it is to set these up and do it. You just got to take that all out, pop the old switches off, and then push the new ones in. It's just a push fit design. Really simple and straightforward to do and makes life really easy and i like seeing this option it's a nice extra to have on a mouse it means that you don't have to worry about how this is going to hold up over time because you can just replace them yourselves or upgrade them if you don't like the switches change to different ones there are other options out there and that is great to have that flexibility you can also see a lot of the other things going on here including the mouse wheel which has a really nice sort of accent and design to it with a funky little tread on it there and some rgb lighting this has as you'll see multiple rgb lighting zones the mouse wheel the logo and of course that cluster of buttons on the left hand side and you can customize that lighting and it works with the aurora software so if you have other azus peripherals you can set up the lighting to work across those too so there's plenty of different things there are lots of features here that you're seeing that make this mouse appealing. It also has some pretty decent specs. You got up to 19,000 DPI, 400 IPS, 50 Gs acceleration, and a 1,000 Hz polling rate. It also has a tuned optical sensor that's able to deliver an accurate response. Now, when gaming, I found that I didn't have a problem with the response of this mouse. It was, as I said, the button clicks are good, response from it is good. I'll show you a sample of gaming and my experience with it later on. The one thing, unfortunately, that I did find is that the thing is just a bit too heavy for me. I'm so used to using lightweight mice that the sheer weight of this thing, I actually found that I was getting a bit of fatigue when using it. Like my wrist and my arm were just getting tired over time. I have quite long gaming sessions. I usually play for about six hours when I'm playing. And so <laughs> over time, it's soon just got a bit too taxing with that weight. However, there are multiple other highlights. Obviously, having a mass of buttons is wonderful. USB-C connection for charging, fast charge capabilities, and the overall sort of large shape and grip design on it. It's really easy to hold on to. It's really easy to get your fingers and thumbs off the desk and make sure you're just gripping what you need to be. And you have the customization options that I'll show you in the software later on the fast charging, the convenience of the dock. I don't think you can overstate the convenience of that charging dock either because it is really easy to use. And I've seen docks from other companies like Razer and Logitech that are just a bit of a fiddle to set up. And it's so much easier just to plop the mouse on there thanks to that sort of magnetic setup. And it's just really simple to drop it on there too. Now here you can see some action where I was using it for actual gaming purposes. And you'll note the RGB lighting shining nicely through here and just where you have to sort of reach to press those thumb buttons, which are unfortunately awkward, as I said. I wish they were spread out a little bit more and that's obviously going to be a personal preference. But here you can see some action from Rainbow Six Siege. Just playing a little bit of Terrorist Hunt, shooting some baddies, extracting a hostage and it is responsive enough to be able to do this with relative ease and not have any problems in the response there so i definitely found it accurate despite being heavyweight also just really good in terms of how it works and the overall response from it now i'm going to show you the armory crate software and talk about what you can do there and here we are within the Armory Crate software. This software allows you to customize the mouse in a number of different ways. You can see the buttons here. You also know what I was talking about before. So as standard, the front left and right buttons next to the, this button here are forward and backwards. This is what you'd normally find on a mouse with the side buttons. So that's the default settings for those, which is unusual in itself. You also see the DPI switching button here, and you can also adjust scroll click and the other buttons obviously the main focus is going to be these 
and you'll see that I've changed them ever so slightly. If I reset these, you'll notice what they are immediately. You have the Windows key as the top front right button. That opens your start menu up. You then have mute as that back little one. Target focus, volume down. That one's disabled. These are the default settings within Armory Crate, which is completely logical for a gaming mouse, if you ask me. Why the hell have you got a Windows key as the default button? But you can easily customize them in here. Obviously, you have the ability to record macros separately, but you can do other things. You can have a keyboard function, so a button press. You can edit, set it up to do a screenshot, in Windows shortcuts, multimedia playback, and other things in here. So you do have the ability to program a lot of these, but I'll be honest, I found that really only this bottom one here, the top one and that back one are the ones that I could feel easily in the heat of battle. These other ones are just a bit too close together and a bit too small, but this is obviously going to be a personal thing. You might find you don't have that problem, but I think it's worth knowing. In the performance settings, you'll see you can change between four different DPI levels, all the way up to 19,000, and you can... Click on the little button on the mouse to change these. You also note that you have a thousand hertz polling rate and angle snapping options. Lighting effects, you have a variety of different effects here. Aurora Creator, obviously, and you can sync it with other Azus peripherals. You can also adjust the lighting of the charging dock. And you'll note, as I said earlier, that it has an indicator to let you know when the battery's getting low. So you'll see 20% red and then blue and green, so when you get a highlight there. You can calibrate the mouse to various different surfaces, and you can adjust the lift-off distance here between high and low. I didn't notice much difference there. You also have an option for battery saving, so you can set it when to go to sleep, or to change the lighting to alert you when it's getting low, and update the firmware. So fairly straightforward software, and easy enough to use. You can obviously go into Aurora Sync to customize your lighting to match everything else in your system if you want as well, which is an added bonus. If you click here on the device thing, you'll see you have the X here. You also have the ability to record macros in here. So there's a separate section for recording macros. You can set up your macros in here and then you can assign it within the software. I have noticed that this can be a bit finicky. Obviously I'm using the mouse right now but the software keeps telling me that it needs me to switch it on and put it into wireless mode, which is odd because that is what's happening. So a bit strange that it keeps doing that, but it has been a regular occurrence when trying to use it. So the software is a bit finicky, but you do need to go into that. And it's one of the first things that I'd recommend you do. Overall, an interesting mouse. If you don't mind the weight and you're looking for a larger gaming mouse, we, because you have a larger hand and you like a large style, then you'll find this is going to be a great option. The multitude of buttons are also intriguing and give you a lot of potential. However, I personally found them a bit too fiddly and too close together. But you do have a variety of options in terms of the placement, obviously, with those two at the front on the left click and then multiple on the side. The grips are obviously fantastic as well. It's really nice having the rests on the other side. So overall, a fantastic option, an expensive one, a heavy one, but one that's well worth considering. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.